Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 280 for Monday, November 16th, 2020. Folks, and welcome to or welcome back to Gig Gab, the show by for and about working musicians here in Durham, Durham. I almost said Durham, Connecticut, which I don't even I know. You say Durham, California. Durham, California. I could have. No, I don't know why I was going to say Durham. I don't know what was making me think of Connecticut. That's. I mean, I grew up in Connecticut. I was born there, but I do not currently live there, and I don't even know if there's a Durham, Connecticut. Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent, and we're we're relatively sure of all the information we just shared. Well, we we beat around the bush to it. We did. It's like crazy nice weather here. It's 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 the middle of November, the sixteenth of November, and yeah. it's it's probably gonna be eighty degrees today. Well, that's good. Yeah, we had yeah. like I said last week, we had our seventy degree stretch. It's probably sixty today. It's gonna be like thirty on Wednesday, and then back up into the high fifties or sixties this weekend. So. Could have grabbed a couple extra weekends of uh, outdoor stuff. I I have been hiking in the woods every day of the weekend so far. In fact, on Saturday, uh, I was in sort of the woods. Well, actually, I was. I hiked in the woods after we did this. But earlier in the day, we recorded a video with Bitter Pill at a place called Haunted Overload, which is, I think it's either the top or certainly one of the top five or ten, like, uh, haunted trail kind of outdoor, you know, experience Halloween-y things that happens in the, you know, this time of year in the country. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they were tearing it down for the season, which isn't, they don't really take it all down. They leave a lot of it standing, but you know, they were winterizing it, let's say, and, and changing some things and, you know, prep for next year and that sort of thing. And, uh, that was happening most of the weekend, but, uh, but there was one section of it where, uh, our friend Harry McCoy wanted to film us at it. And it was, it was this old building that's going to be torn down. It's been there for, as part of haunted overload for years. And uh, Harry, it like had this little deck that was a perfect little stage for, for our quirky little band, bitter pill. And so we went and we, we recorded a video, which, com- which consisted of, figuring out how we were going to stand and position ourselves. Harry sort of had the vision on this, which was awesome. And he, you know, he does this, which is great. Uh, But he positioned us, you know, got us ready. I wound up playing some like sort percussive sorts of instruments, though there were no drums on stage or on the, in the area, which was fun. And, uh, and so it, it consisted of us just, playing through the song, lip syncing, you know, playing along with the song uh, several times. I think we probably went through the song, I don't know, seven or eight times. And, uh, you know, we just, he would play it on a Bluetooth speaker and film us while, you know, while the song was playing. And it was a blast. You know, it was sort of like playing music as a band together. So that was fun, right? We were experiencing one of our songs together simultaneously. So like, so it's it's interesting, especially now that we're, you know, th- the opportunities to do that together are so, so limited that even how the, loud was it played back for you to, to kind of mime to, to, to make you kind of feel it? Um, I mean, it was just a little Bluetooth speaker that he had, but it wow. was, it was loud enough. Um, you know, I mean, I was banging on a, 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 a big like drum tank, like a, 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 I don't know, 60 gallon drum or whatever it was tank on the bottom of it, you know, and, uh, and banging on that with a hammer. And it was loud enough to hear over that sort of, you know, and we were, we were singing into the air and it was, it was great. Like it, we were playing our song together and that was fun, you know, to be able to do that. But equally as fun was just being together and hanging out and cutting up and, you know, all those things that happen between songs and between takes and just, you know, being a band together is really what it was. Um, sure. And, and that it's interesting. It, you know, I was it. We were probably halfway through when it finally hit me. It was like, oh, wait, like I'm taking this for granted. But this really is, you know, <laughs> one of the few experiences where I get to do this. So it was it was really nice. We, we had fun. It was good. And. You know, I have a lot of questions about this because yeah. uh, one thing I want to try and get to first part of the year is a official promo video for, for the house rockers. Mm. So, so we um, have one, it's pretty old 
And um, pretty much what it is, is um, I had, a, you know, told the guys we're going to be filming tonight. Everybody dress great and, you know, be aware that you're being filmed. Sure. And we just basically videoed a club date, you know, that we did and took highlights from that. Yep. And it's, it's okay. And, you know, our friend Wally actually, you know, did the production for us and oh, kind of nice. added the, had the post-production and, you know, editing and all that type of stuff. And it's fine. Um, but it's not, it's not, it's not competitive now. And, and so th- this concept of competitive is interesting to me. So there's a couple bands in my area. So, uh, our friend Dan Meblin, who was on our show, he's got a great band in this area and he's a really good, he's, he must have some training in it because he produces really good, um, videos, of his band pop fiction, and he takes live videos. Yep. He you know has several cameras set up. And then the ending results, he'll take a song and he'll splice together the performance from, from, uh, from the song. So, you know, they have this thought out in advance and that they play to a click. So, so tempos are always consistent and they can line up several live performances uh, at I, once. I, I always wondered about that part of it. I mean, I know that, that things like Final Cut Pro, which is no longer Final Cut Pro X, by the way, Logic Pro <laughs> is now Logic Pro, not Logic Pro X, because Apple doesn't have Mac OS 10 anymore. It's Mac OS 11. XI. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep. So, uh, but fi- I know that Final Cut Pro will allow you to sort of stretch video and line up with, with time that doesn't exist and all of that stuff. But he, it's clear that, that Dan and, uh, has the, has the, the workflow of this down to where he can produce a video very, very efficiently. It seems, I mean, I'm not there over his shoulder, obviously. So maybe who knows, maybe he spends two weeks on each one, but I don't think he does like there's a formula to it. He, you know, it just works for him. And the click is, was the missing part in my head about why that formula might be easier for him than perhaps others. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I asked him that because when I saw, I've seen two or three of the ones that he's released and basically it's the same song and, but there, his band, which I don't want to say costumes, but they have a dress, you know, they like everybody wear yellow today or something yeah. like that. And, 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 and well, what, is, so what does he mix, say? Don't mix. dress up, but don't look like a waiter. That's what he told us yeah. that he told his band. Go. Good, good memory. Yeah. 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 So, you know, one song it'll have him and the band in the yellow stuff and then in the red stuff and in the white stuff and, yeah. and, you know, put together, it's very effective. And he's always got cameras set up with, with, uh, crowd shots and they play some pretty big shows. So the really impressive, it was just a really good band. And, um, you know, the end result of these videos is really effective. Yeah. Sound is good. You know, they're just taking board recordings of themselves live again. It, they play to a click. So the time, you know, between performances is consistent. And so he lines these things up. There's another band in my area that, um, uh, it's called Mercy and the Heartbeats. And uh, they're a newer band that kind of just started getting going right before lockdown came down. And they have they have a real superstar, you know, woman singer. I mean, she's total package. She dances great. She sings great. She's so natural on camera. And, you know, most of the videos are her. And they kind of take the um, approach of doing, you know, 20 seconds of, of 10 different songs. Mm-hmm. But it's all, you know, filmed beautifully. And she's kind of like you know, choreo, not choreographed, but I mean, you know, like walking along the water for this one and, you know, but performing the songs in her own way, Sure, different members of the band get worked into it. These are two very polished groups. And I'm trying to think about what is the right thing for the house rockers to do, you know, for the purposes we want to serve. We want to continue to get big outdoor gigs. We want to get corporate gigs. Um, and, you know, but we don't have that style. Right. And I'm trying to find where's the essence of truth, of our band that would make it show up and have a video of us, you know, effectively. The one that we have is actually, I'm, I have never been really happy with it. It's kind of, kind of sterile, you know, for what it's like when we play and th- that didn't, doesn't come out. And I don't even know how, that's all I could say to a, if I was to hire a videographer and say, you know, capture us, that's all I could say is here's what I can show you. I don't want <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, right. You, this well, doesn't so- look like it's, this is interesting, right? Because we went, we, there was clearly some of this that went through Harry's head and, and Billy's head too, because Harry and Billy clearly had, had spoken, you know, before we got together on, on Saturday. It, totally different thing. Original band, 
video of our original song is Billy, you know, as Billy always says, he says, you know, if I can't make money doing this, at least I can teach the world a lesson. Right. And, and so that's kind of his, his thing. And, and he's like, I want to make a video that, that communicates this song. I don't want to say what song it was. It's one of the ones. What a cool most, thing to say. Most recent record. Yeah. Right. But, th but there's, this isn't, I mean, it could certainly be used as a promo pack video or something like that, but that's not, it's, it, it, it was, it was not, created or is not being created for that purpose primarily obviously anything that exists can be used in any a lot, a lot of different ways right and so you know no rules but this was you know this is we wrote a song we we perform it and we want to create a music video for our song great okay so but what you're talking about with pop fiction and house rockers and this other band are you know, you want to create, sure, something that represents you that your fans could see, but also something that you would use as your promotion material, right? Like, and that's know, the primary that's reason. That's the you primary know, for, for reason. For ranking reasons, it, it, is a, it is a marketing tool, a It's a marketing tool. tool, right. And so the question is, and, and you, you're sort of bringing this up, like, what is the image of the band that you want to portray? And when I, in, in this, I mean, when I come see the House Rockers, you guys are like, you create this like rockin', sweaty, everybody in it together, you know, party for the night kind of vibe. But that's, that's, it. that's but, which is awesome, by the way, not that I haven't said that before, but just for the record, but that's really hard to capture on video. So, you know, especially when you don't have a crowd in like to, to be able to currently assemble to film, because it would seem to me that, you would need to communicate what the house rockers are about. It's more about the energy that happens between the stage and the crowd and not just what happens on stage. Not to say that pop fiction doesn't engage with the crowd, but pop fiction, if all you saw was them, you would get an image of that band. If all I saw was yeah. you guys, it would be like there's a bunch of guys playing instruments. That, don't take that the wrong way, but like no, it's missing the right. it's missing the point. And so perhaps you need to you need to find an artificial way to naturally add that to the video. And I, I use those words very carefully. Like, and I don't that it's going to be difficult, and the video isn't going to be what you think your band looks like because it probably isn't what your band looks like. But in the hands of the right filmmaker, creative person, maybe they can find a way to communicate. Here we are entertaining people. And and this is how we're going to show that, even though this isn't what happens at a show. Well, this is interesting. So if I was to sit down and I suppose I will with a filmmaker, right. I would say and hopefully he would ask me, what, what do you want to communicate? And yeah. I do think about that a lot because I think about that in terms of our band and our show and music selection and, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of things. So I would say we are kind of that hot, sweaty house party roadhouse vibe that yeah. that would be that would be one of us. Yeah. Two, um, we're the band, you know, there's just so many of us. We do kind of have this this group vibe going. Right. So yep. we do have a. It's a, it's know, a parliament funkadelic kind of thing. Yeah, that's it. We have this kind of power in numbers type of feeling and that, but it's inclusive and that, you know, there's that line between the stage and the audience is blurred, pretty blurred with not that, you know, there's people running on stage. No, all the time, no, no, no. But I'm just saying, yeah. you know, the, the, the fourth the, wall the is down. To, yeah, that's it. Yeah. 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 And then I would also say, you know, we're also, um, mature, competent musicians. Right. And and that's the hardest one to communicate because I don't want to say old because old doesn't work. Be, and I, I would be careful say, of mature even because people translate well, that to old. That's like saying that your right. house is cozy. Oh, it's small. Yeah, Got it's it. small. <laughs> no, but, and that's actually it. This is the hardest part to communicate is like, um, I'll give you an example. I, I, a band in my area, um, just did a promo video for an original song they did and they're, they're kind of older or most of the people in the band are older. I think one of the people is younger, but they kind of went for a Mad Max thing, like a lot of yeah. tight leather and a lot of, you know, a lot of wind blown and a lot of smoke bombs and, you know, that type of thing. And, you know, I haven't seen the finished product, so I don't want to totally judge, but they posted kind of some behind the scenes pictures. And my thought is always, well, you know, the thing that works in performing music and in, in playing music is truth, you know, and, and does this, 
is this a tongue in cheek thing? And, and it's a, you know, everybody's in on a joke or is this like, no, we're taking you, you know, to Mad Max land and, and, you know, and isn't this cool. And, and I would say that that's a risk. It's a stretch if it's not your truth, but you want it to be your truth just for this type of thing Yeah, for my band. And, and again, I think, I think uh, Pop Fiction and Mercy, they do a very good job. Their videos to me, having knowing those guys and knowing their shows, their videos represent a truth about who those bands are. Sure. Right? You, you, you could see these videos, as you just said, that Dan makes for Pop Fiction and get a very good idea of the product that if you're a corporate buyer or a, or a wedding buyer, you, you would get a really good idea about the essence of the music that they play, the way that they stage it, and all that type of stuff. This is where I get stuck. It's like we don't have, you know, a, a female singer up front. We, you know, we and, and we are, um, uh, you know, uh, 10 guys of various ages, all competent musicians. And I would actually want to be able to communicate that in video. Like, how do you how do you be like, you know, we're not just weekend you know, dad band things, right? The, you know, these, these guys can play music their whole life. I mean, do you do, so th this is just spitballing, right? Blue sky solutioneering here. So, y you know, in the sixties, right. It, and I'm thinking of that thing you do, but, but they parroted this from all the other Ed Sullivan style things where the band would be playing a song and there would be close-ups of each member at least once, right? You know, might just focus on the singer most of the time because that's, you know, what people wanted to see. But, you know, the, during a, a guitar solo or something, they'll they'll focus in on the drummer and put the drummer's name below. And, the, and the, you know, with the keyboard player and the keyboard players, even though, even though the Wonders didn't have a keyboard player. But, you, you know, like, so... I know is, exactly what you're saying. What's, yeah, so... D taking that kind of a vibe or, or at least thinking about that kind of a vibe, does it make sense to come up with some song... And maybe it's not a song. Maybe it's just a blues gro groove or something or, or take a song that people know, but, but play it differently to allow for, you know, one bar, uh, little riffs like the, you know, the band stops and Nick does a, a run on the keyboards or whatever. And then it's back to the groove and the band stops and Simon does a little riff and, and you can kind of go around and, and maybe, you know, you don't highlight each we, horn. We player. got a lot of guys, man. <laughs> yeah. But, but maybe you, you know, you, you break down just the horn section that does like a cool little thing and you're like, Oh, Holy crap. That's awesome. And then, you know, break down, you know, you could probably, you could probably do it in like four different things, right? You got horns, you've got bass and drums who could do it together. Nick, you, Simon. Okay. That's five. I, you know, I overshot my budget by one. You'll, you'll forgive me. Right. So I, I feel like th th that would be one way of doing this because as you're saying, what you're saying to me is it's about the music partially. So we need the music to do some of the talking here, not just be the background because for, for like pop fiction, the music is essentially background. I know what I'm going to get. If I see them do, you know, September, I know that I'm going to see a polished band play September. There are no surprises in that video. That's not a bad thing. They do a very good job with their video. And I know that their video works well for them because that combined with all their other marketing efforts gets them gigs. Right. So mm -hmm. for you guys, you want to have that little bit of surprise and delight. Like, Oh, holy crap. Like Nick can really play, you know, or whatever. Like, like those are the kinds of things that you need to incorporate into the video even though that might not be exactly how the show goes, right? You need to take a 2.5 hour show and condense it down into 2.5 minutes. So you got to pick and choose your highlights. And that might mean, as I said before, artificially crafting a version of some song that you play that naturally highlights the fact that you guys are, a group of, like you said, very competent musicians that can entertain, that can play. Like if, if I would to say one thing about the house records, I'd say, oh, those guys can play their asses off. Right. So how do you communicate that in the video? That's one way of doing it. It's not the only way. It's the first one I came up with. Yeah. Well, yep. I mean, it's as good an idea as any. I mean, you, right. you kind of have it's to a start, it right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that a, a couple of communicating the kind of like gang where like we're a big family type thing. Don't say that you're a gang. Do, That's bad. Well, you know, a, a, a group, you know, <laughs> yeah, a, a no, mob, I know, you know, I know what you whatever. <laughs> yeah. I would say, um, uh, that we do that. And that, that always rings true. Like when I see our, our band pictures and we like, you know, you say, Oh my gosh, it's a really big band. 
you get that message and you get that picture. And so, you know, I, that in a static image, I feel pretty comfortable. I can communicate ways yeah. to do that. And we've had good band pictures over the years. I just want to find that way in, 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 uh, but again, you're right. You know, I, I, we might be able to do it on a vamp and, and show off music, musicianship. I think though, in these kind of corporate videos, you got to play something people know and grab them right away. Like any demo, right. You got to grab people right away. Yeah. So you, so you need to pick a song that people know and, and then, you know, it, it, let's say it's going to be 90 seconds. Okay. So you do, you know, 30 seconds of here's let's, let's lay the foundation. We're playing a song that, you know, and we're playing and singing it well. And now you've got, you know, 45 seconds of your vamp that, that highlights each musician a little bit. And then 15 seconds, we're all singing the chorus and everybody's having a party and you should book us. I, I mean, again, right. I'm not, this is literally the first video I've conceived of. Please don't just do this and <laughs> run with it. But, you know, like that kind of idea, like, okay, now we've got something that we can tear apart and actually turn into something good. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're going to, you know, I, I would love to have a good conversation with a filmmaker and, and yeah. talk it, talk it through and see if they can communicate their vision to me because I'm, I'm a little bit of a hit a wall on, you know, I, I can say what I like about my band and what I think is, is successful about my band, but turning that into translating it well. And, you know, if anybody wants to look, we have our, uh, our original, um, promo video on our website and on our YouTube page. And I think you can see it's, it's, it's a, it's an attempt at what I'm trying to communicate. And Wally did great with what the, with the content we gave him. Sure. But for some reason it's not quite, it's not quite there. And, you know, I'd like to, and again, I, I'm competing for gigs with, with Dan's band with mercy and, right. and uh, I got to find something, you know, that is going to represent us in, in his, polished away that's going to communicate to, you know, potential buyers, you know, what our unique values are. And so what's different about us? We always talk, you know, what makes your band different? We, you know, we are big, we do have five horns and, you know, there are five horn arrangements to some of the stuff we do is pretty cool. Yeah. And I guess, you know, that's what I'm going to have the opportunity in a, in a three and a half to five minute video. How long do you think videos should be for promo videos? Oh man, I'm probably the wrong guy to ask. I, I, you know, I'm a, I'm very much a don't bore us, get to the chorus kind of guy for that sort of <laughs> stuff, <laughs> which I happily will steal from Joe Perry all day. Uh, so I would say, you know, I would, I would aim for 90 seconds knowing that mm. that's going to be impossible. So it'll be two and a half minutes and maybe that's okay. But yeah. you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't ask somebody to sit down for 10 minutes cause they're not gonna have other videos, right? But you gotta, you gotta hook them and set the hook with, with something that's quick and like, whoa, it, it, you know, for what you're doing, you just need to show them, holy crap. Like I, I want to see more of this band, right? Yeah. They say, leave them wanting more, especially the person that's literally in charge of making the decision as to whether or not to hire you. You want them to be left wanting more because <laughs> more is when you make money. So yeah. yeah, more is when you get gigs. So yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. Like, but the, the process can be fun. It can, it, you know, it can be fun and frustrating front front trading. I don't know what the heck that is. And we've talked about this concept of truth versus, you know, it's like if you're not a bunch of guys who wear tight leather, you know, and you look uncomfortable in the tight weather, that's going to look bad in pictures. It's going to look bad on stage. It's going to look really bad in video yeah. where it's there forever. Right. Yeah. So the degree to which you are, you know, either guided by a really talented filmmaker who can get you comfortable because it'll look really cool. I guess that there's, you know, that's what they do for a living, right? Sure. They tell a story, sure. you know, in as, in as, in as interesting a way possible, but, you know, finding the truth and, you know, ex the unique parts of what your band does. There's a lot, we always say there's, you know, there's a lot of four piece classic rock cover bands out there that are playing 80% overlap in, in uh, sets. So, yep. you know, what's if, the difference? Yeah. Well, it's the difference. So. Yeah. No, and and this is this is why I say you might have to artificially craft something to show your true image, right? <laughs> because yeah. because somebody can't if you could get everyone who was going to book you into a club for even just one set, not not even 2 hours or you know 3 hours, but just 1 yeah. hour, then that's fine. Now they're going to get what you are, but they you like that's not realistic. So you've got to craft something that communicates what they would naturally learn in an hour in, you know, 90 to 300 seconds. And so yep. figure it out, you know, 300 right. seconds is way too long by the way, but that's five minutes. So, you know, there you go. 
I, All right, I want to change. Yeah, wait, I want to change. I, I want to share one thing here because it 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 came up for me this week separately, but it fits with what we're talking about here. I uh, friends with Facebook with a guy I went to high school with, and we both had played in the marching band, and he he reminded me a comment that he made reminded me of something our band director in marching band always said. And it was three words. And I can't believe I haven't thought about these three words in, you know, 30 years. But when he said it, it all came flooding back to me. And the three words are eyes with pride. And that was the thing that our band director would always tell us when we do these marching band competitions, you know, you go out on a football field and you essentially do a halftime show, right? Like, you, we would do halftime shows and then we would take that halftime show and go compete against other bands doing their halftime shows for people that don't know. This is a thing that happens. And, and it was eyes with pride and it, it was, it was an obvious thing then as to what that meant. It's obvious now as to what that means. It's more, there are more things about it that I understand now than I did back then. But even back then it meant something eyes with pride. And I knew, you know, we all knew how to communicate that and we all knew how important it was to communicate that. And I think when you're doing your video, that kind of thing is really important. If you're out there performing and you are embarrassed or having second, I don't even want to say embarrassed. If you are having second thoughts about what you're doing and why, which is something that can easily happen during a video shoot that will be communicated to the other side of the camera, right? No question about it. That will be communicated yeah. to anyone that's watching. This is true on, on a live stage. This is true on a video stage. It doesn't matter. But that whole eyes with pride thing really matters. In fact, there was one point on Saturday where Harry was doing some close up shots. You know, were playing through the song again and I was playing. Any of you who have seen me play either in person or in video, you know that joy often just pours out uh, and is very evident on my face. The song that we were doing, as with many Bitter Pill songs, is not the most joyous song. It's sort of tongue-in-cheek, sure. It's okay to smile a little, but it's not joy. And <laughs> Harry says to me, because he's not recording audio, he's like, don't smile so much, Dave. <laughs> and everybody was like, <laughs> you clearly haven't met Dave yet, you know. <laughs> but, but, you know, like, and so it was like, oh, crap. Suddenly I was self-conscious about, okay, now I need to project the right image, but I still need to be me. And, you know, I probably got into my head for the rest of that take. And then we had to do, you know, we did things again. I trust Harry. He will he will find the right images and make the, the thing that he wants to make. And I think that's great. Uh, but it was an interesting little comment. But but yeah, eyes with pride. I, I think it's a good thing for all of us to remember any time we're on stage anywhere, because if you are not committed to what you're doing and you can't act like you are committed to what you're doing, people will know it. So anyway, right. it's truth. It's truth. Right. Yeah. It's 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 just another way of of sort of communicating that truth. Yeah. So, yeah. Craig Sherman right, was wanna... my band director in high school. I haven't I haven't heard from him in probably a decade, and I don't know what he's up to, but that that, that will that's a good one to remember. I'm not going to forget uh, it. If you took it with you all the way through your adult life, it's obviously yeah, it's, that's a home run piece of advice. It's a home run, yeah, exactly. All right, I thought it'd be fun to um, talk a little bit about pop music. You and I both have an affinity for you know. 70s pop and one hit wonder songs and you know just kind of like finding those interesting things that'll put a smile on people's face and and uh get people to sing along in our in our cover sets right yeah sure so i was just kind of thinking about what are what are great pop songs that you can play and i don't i'm not a big fan of playing these things ironically you know i i think you know these songs have stood the test of time and are interesting songs and you know people love them and so to play them silly or to, or to goof them up, I don't know that I would do that. Sure. But, um, but, uh, what are, what are fun songs? Like you, you and I played Brandy together and that was a pretty fun one. <laughs> it is a fun one. Yeah. It's a great song. I mean, there's so many of them, right? There's, uh, it, it, well, you know, a couple. Yeah. So off the top of my head, and of course I'm frantically searching for set lists here because I haven't thought about these kinds of songs in, you know, at least several months, but you know, something like Brown Eyed Girl, right? Great song, oh, it, you know, great little melody, good opportunity for harmonies. People, some people, musicians, it is one that musicians are known to hate. Understandably, I get it. But, you know, it's because it's overplayed, but it's not that overplayed. You know, it's like it's, it's overplayed because it's a good song. So, yeah, so yeah. that's that's one. That, there, there you go. I, um, 
Uh, yeah, I mean, do you want me to keep going? I, I, I yeah. could probably go all night. Um, well, you, you do a couple and I'll do a couple and see, let's see what we can reflect. Yeah. On. Okay. You may be right. Billy Joel. People hate playing that song too. Sometimes I uh, great song. So well written as are most of Billy Joel's songs. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, that's great, kind of in there with sweet home Alabama as kind of a, as a, 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 a rock and roll think book thing. Right. Yep. Totally. We, but, we play that. We have a, we, we wrote a horn chart for it in the house. Rock no, that's great. Yeah. Always fills the dance floor. You know, it, be, people who are not big music song. fans know it. Yeah. 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 As are many of his, like I could, I could probably, you know, list another five real fast. Uh, yeah. Jenny, Jenny, eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. Right. Like another yeah. one. It, but you got to commit to these Jesse's girl. Another one of those. That's just like, it's a great song. So celebrate that. It's a, I, I love Margaritaville. I'll I'll end this round on that one. The, All right. You know, people hate it. Uh, musicians yep. hate it. Crowds love it. <laughs> I yeah. And I love all of these songs when I play them. I don't know that I would sit around my house and listen to Jenny, Jenny and Margaritaville uh, necessarily. I'm sure there are times that I have, but, but if but you play them and instantly energy starts going through the room, that's the thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like how bad could this be? Yeah. Right. 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 All right. Well, I'll, I'll give you something to think about while I'm giving you a couple of mine. Okay. Um, what are the songs that are, you know, like, and cover bands are always looking for, Oh, I'm going to bring this song back and people are going to go, oh, I haven't mm -hmm. heard that in a while. I love this song. So let's think about the less obvious ones that okay. people do. So how about, how about buttercup? Oh, build me up buttercup. That is yeah. a guaranteed dance floor filler. Even if you play it poorly. It's just one of college. It's actually hard to sing. It's, oh my! A lot of range God, on it. It's so yeah. hard. What? Don't, I mean, like, it's it's like way up there, you know. And the opening note seems high until you get to the chorus and realize, yeah. uh oh, I gotta go further. Actually, I guess it's yeah. the last line of the verse in that song that's the that's the really hard one. But yeah, yeah, that's I like it. Yep, there you go. All right. How about? Um, and again, we're hopping between between decades here. But totally. how about? Tainted Love by Soft Cell. Great song. Did you know that it's not by Soft Cell? That is a cover. I did not know that. Yeah. Somebody, Gloria, oh God, not Gloria Gaynor, a Gloria, a, someone whose name you know far less than Soft Cell uh, mm. was the original to do that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, that was a cover that made it. Um, much like Superman from R.E.M., covered by the band called The Click. So anyway. We got asked to do Dancing in the Moonlight. We do that. By yeah. Big Harvest. Oh, yeah. that's a fun song to play. <laughs> it is. I love that song. Yeah. That's a good song for a uh, solo guitarist who want to do a looping song. It's just four chords pretty much over and over again. Nice. And uh, that's a good one to set up on a looper. So, mm. uh, and again, people know it, they love it. And, yep. and uh, that also has kind of a nice early in the evening vibe when you're trying to get into a warming, warming up the crowd type of a song, right? It does. Yeah, that's it. It is. It's one of those like, yeah, it's a great song. I, yeah, <laughs> I was I was shocked. I don't know, three or four years ago, m my son was telling us that uh, I, I we gave him this big Bluetooth speaker to bring to the locker room for hockey games. And uh, he said, oh, yeah, we you know, we like to play music while we're getting ready. And and then, you know, uh, we have different songs that we play at different times. I'm like, so who who's in charge of the music? He's like, oh, our captain is, you know, like, oh, OK, what kind of songs are you guys playing? And he says, Dancing in the Moonlight. And I'm, he's like, that's the song we play after we win a game. And I'm like, well, I mean, I know the old King Harvest <laughs> dancing in the moonlight. What are you talking about? He's like, no, yeah, that's the one. He's like, oh, you've heard that song. I'm like, because yeah. there, there is a there is a incredibly great song, Dancing in the Moonlight by Thin Lizzy. That's a different, very, a di very different totally song. different. No, they, they were doing King Harvest and they were playing Brandy and stuff. It was like, this is the hockey team, right? You're selling, you're telling me like I never would have expected. So, um, yeah. uh, you know, a, a one that is. I think one of those songs that if you play it well enough, uh, you can, you know, quote unquote, bring it back is money for nothing. I think that's mm. one of those songs that people, you know, have that instant. Everyone knows that song and most bands don't play it. So I think that's, that's one that, that you know, one other thing you can do with all of these songs is sometimes you just need to, if you can find the right places, just put one chorus of them in the middle of something else. Totally. And it can really just jolt the room. And that's, yep. a, that's a lot of fun. That is a lot of fun. Yeah, that is a lot of fun. You can be clever and entertaining to both the crowd and yourselves in those moments. So, yep. Um, how about 
Either of these, My Sharona or Good Girls Don't by the Neck. <laughs> Good Girls Don't was literally the next thing I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like Good Girls Don't better than My Sharona. I, I've never been a fan of those songs that just have like a grinding guitar riff that seems to never stop. Like Re Rebel Rebel is one I, I just, I there are a few songs I don't enjoy playing on stage. And for whatever reason, like those types so, so of songs, that's one of them. This would translate why we never had a lot of success trying to play Bob's um, Ramones songs, right? I Yeah, I mean, uh, it, but the Ramones, a lot of the Ramones is just like, there, there's not riffs to it. It, it. I don't mind the Ramones songs, to be perfectly honest. I actually kind of like the Ramones songs, but that, you know, that, uh, 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 it's like, uh, it's a little <laughs> much to me. I don't know. It's just me. Like, I get that people love that song. I will happily play it, but it is one of those, all of these songs that we've listed, I said I won't listen to necessarily, but when I play them, I am happy to be playing them. My Sharona and 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 Rebel Rebel are songs that by about halfway through, I'm like, okay, what's this? Gonna Where are we? Again? <laughs> Gosh, it's the same thing. I stopped counting a while ago. I stopped. Yeah, I stopped counting. I stopped caring. This is bad. So that's yeah. really funny. Yep, I like Good Girls Don't Though. Well written song. I mean, it's it's yeah. it's dirty, but you know that's okay. Lots of songs yep. are dirty. Yeah, that one's just a little more on the nose about it. <laughs> Rocket Man. That's another one. Yeah. Have you ever done that? Rocket Man is, well, yeah, but the thing about most Elton songs is there's a certain level of polish. So if you can find a way to take Elton songs and remove, because they're great structured songs. I mean, the yes. progression is really interesting. The, the melodies are fantastic. Those are just one of those, he's one of those artists that I find harder to deconstruct mm. unless you're really good at deconstructing things. Rocket Man works really well acoustic. Um, uh, yeah, it, definitely. It, you know, if, if you've got somebody that can sing it, uh, and, and then it works really well acoustic, I think. So, yeah, you know, no, I agree with that. What, one of my favorite pop songs to sing, and this is truly like power pop at its finest is bad fingers. No matter what, mm. that's a, that's a great song. And that's one of those that people, you know, th th they hear that intro and it's like, oh yeah, I'm in, you know, which is great. That's how it should be. Well, no, I wouldn't call this a, you know, a, a necessarily a power pop. Well, I guess it's a, it is a power song. go away by the raspberries. Oh yeah. Oh, I forgot about that song. Oh, the yeah. intro of that song is yep. just a killer. Yeah. I like it. That's good. Uh, one of the uh, premier, we're going to hack through this and make it work songs, even though we might upset the purists in the room and some of whom might be on stage with us is saw her standing there. Right. Like that's, that's one of those songs that bands play everywhere. And it's, well, a, definitely. it's a great song. Uh, most yeah, that, bands don't play. You have everywhere. to have and Yep. Yep. Yeah, and that's one of those rock and roll fake book songs, though. That's one. Yeah, that's rock right. and roll fake book. Yeah, exactly. I, I, and I should say, I, I, I stand by what I said. Most bands don't play it right. That is true about all the other songs we've said, too. I just might happen to be one of the purists on that one. So there you go. Yeah. 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 So many good songs. Honky Tonk Woman? I, well, yeah. I mean, that's. I would say that's more rock and roll. I think that what I'm trying to guide yeah, you to is more you. that kind of stuff like... You know, like Brandy, like truly 70s AM gold stuff. Not, not, you know what I'm talking about? I totally do. Yacht rock is what you're talking about, man. <laughs> I think it's actually, and that's interesting. Yacht rock is starting to be something that people have a cognizance of what they're saying. I think yacht rock is actually a little bit later than what I'm, what it, I'm envisioning. It is. Yacht rock is like Hall and Oates and Christopher Cross and right. So it is. we're kind of getting a little later into the seventies. Yeah. I, I'm thinking when you're still listening to on a little tinny, you know, yeah. AM radio in your car yeah yeah so so toto's like africa or rosanna that's not on this list so not on my list not yeah. on your list yeah okay yeah okay but yeah. you know brandy definitely um because uh, brandy um, is can brandy is considered yacht rock now even though it it like you said it 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 predates what yacht rock started as so yeah yeah how interesting yeah 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 for sure yeah um, uh, me and you and a dog named Boo. Too, too folky, too, too obscure? Um, I don't know. I, I, I've never played it in front of a crowd, so I don't know how it, like, is it one of those that works? Have you, have you, have you road tested this? I don't, and the, the, the issue, I have not road tested it. Mm -hmm. I know it. You know, yeah. and those kind of, you know, the, the big folk scare of the late 60s, early 70s, you know, <laughs> those songs are kind of interesting to me. Bread songs would be, you know, kind of in this. I, I'd like to make it with you, right? Oh, wow. Oh, man. Huh. Yeah. Okay. 
I see where you're going with this. The, br- the bread yeah. ones can be a little bit more kitschy than than uh, than the others, unless you are are that singer, you know? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Right. A lot of these were made by the singers or something s- special about the band and not as much about the song. So, yeah. Yeah. And I, I would actually argue that this kind of seventies AM gold gave, gave way to yacht rock. Yeah. Full, fair, fair. Yeah. That, that, I think you're right. And, and now perhaps retrospectively it is uh, being blended together, but yeah, yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, I mean, I mean are we talking like gum stuff. ABC, right? Or I Want You Back? Those are great songs. Those were 70s AM gold for sure. Yeah. Right? And I, like, I Want You Back, that's a great song to play. And David Ruffin did a version of it. <laughs> Not that <laughs> I'm about to say the David Ruffin version is the easy one to sing. Which, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it is because he, I think he did it down in C. So you're not having to sing like young Michael Jackson to even come close to approximate. Yeah. We, the house rockers do. I want you back in C. So in C, yeah, that works. It yeah. works. Yeah. It's, and that's a great song. I would never play that tongue in cheek. I, I love the Jackson five, but I can, now that you asked, now that we kind of have it in this context, I can see where some people might be like, Oh, let's play that tongue in cheek. It's like, no, no, I play that. Like, like I wrote it. I wish yeah, I wrote it. Yeah, definitely. Well, you Lean- played it with us. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 We played it in, um, in what you might call it too, in uh, uh, Groove Syndicate, we played we played that tune. We did it in a Madhouse too once. It's interesting, right? Because it's got that measure of two that turns it around into back into the verse. So you got to be careful with that one. Yeah. If, if not everybody, it's not one that you can play like the rock and roll fake book. You got to have a little conversation before before you dive into that one. So yeah, yeah, you know, lean on me. Well, just- yeah, lean on me and uh, da, 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 oh, da, use me. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I, use me. that is. Oh, I love playing that song. God, that's what, groove. What a groove! Oh, it's <laughs> so subtle and understated, and yet it drives. That the first time I played that song was in Groove Syndicate, whatever, ten years ago, and it was like, oh, okay, great. Like I listened to it, I'm like, oh, this sounds easy, and I got to rehearsal to play it through with them, which I might have been the first time I played it on the drums. And it was like, uh Oh, I'm in trouble. You know, <laughs> like I should have rehearsed this song. Cause you, it, that groove has to be like smoky and slippery and subtle. And yet it drives so hard. It just doesn't sound like it drives hard. Love that song. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh. a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, Oh, it, it never rains in Southern California. It, you know, not a great dance song, but right. you know, it creates a good vibe. We do love train, you know, so, the, and that's oh, kind of yeah. the, that's kind of the, the post Motown early kind of seventies urban stuff. Yep. You know, we do tears of a clown. Yeah. Great song. That's good for um, your band. We, that's, that's, yeah, that's, I like that. That's good. Yeah. 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 But yeah, I mean, uh, you, when was the last time you actually played American Pie? Uh, certainly within the last year. It It's yeah. often requested either at uh, Monkey Fist or Amanda Dane acoustic gigs. So good. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of words. It, yeah. It's one of those where, you know, you do a couple of verses and then you get to the chorus, right? It's often what happens. It depends on the vibe of the room, but the singer really needs to be able to read the room in the moment and know how long to hold out before jumping to the end of the song. Uh, Yeah. 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 And sometimes you play the whole thing. If people like, if the room is singing along with everything, then you're in good shape. But if Mm -hmm. they're not yet singing along and clearly want to, then it's time to, you know, put your foot on the gas, take a shortcut. (laughs) Yeah. 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 That's a good song. Do you guys do that in the house rockers? You, You don't do that there. Do you? No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that, that would be no. a, but in my, in my, you know, I, I have that little coffee house band that does all sing along stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. And that's kind of, that, that's kind of the big closer for that. Oh, nice. Do you do the whole thing? Do you, do you sing all I the, do. all the verses? I okay. do. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. That's good. Yeah. And actually the reason it came back to me, I would not have thought of it. I, I saw John Mayer do it on Letterman a couple of years ago and he did a, you know, just, it was grooving and it was fun and yeah. it was, you know, a different kind of a guitar part. And sure. so that was kind of cool. Yeah. 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 Ah, that's great. Yeah. I like it. That's good. That's good. 
Yeah, it's fun. I I was this is this is interesting kind of thinking through songs and set lists and you know makes me happy and sad all at the same time. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> stuff you'd like to do. I, here's one I did acoustically a couple of months ago and it actually was one of those ones where people were like, "Oh yeah, Love Grows Where My Rosemary Goes." By Edison Lighthouse. Oh, right. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Huh. And that, that was one that the light bulbs went on when I played it. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, it's interesting. I had a moment this weekend where I don't know why, but the song Dancing Days came into my head. And it's one of those that's in the fling set list. I think we wound up playing it in the all-star band too. Uh, the it's Zeppelin a, song. Yeah, the Zeppelin tune. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Dancing Days are here again. It's a fun one to sing. It fits for fling. Like it's just perfect. It's one of those things that just, you know, for our lineup and all that. Uh, we really can make it work. We don't always play it live, but we, if any time Russ has the open G guitar out at rehearsal, yeah, it, he won't not, he won't put it away until we've played dancing days. Cause it's just, you know, uh, he likes playing it. I certainly like singing it and playing the drums on, you know, it's like, there's never, I will never say no to that. And I, for whatever reason, the song came into my head and it was like, man, I miss band rehearsal with fling. Like yeah. that sucks. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right. I got five more for you. Okay. Right? Yeah. And again, the, the idea is kind of one hit wonder, six, 70s, late 60s, AM pop things sure. that you can either throw in a whole song and, you know, people get a kick out of and sing along because it's it's just earworm them to death. And you're probably giving them an earworm for the next 40 years as well. But right. let's try I Think I Love You by Tony Orlando and Dawn. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Daydream Believer or I'm a Believer by the Monkees. Daydream Believer. What a great song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Afternoon Delight's another one of those. That's just yeah. like, you know, like, there you go. Yep. Yep. That's hard sugar, not to do that tongue in cheek. cheek. Sorry. Like yeah, Afternoon well, afternoon Delight. Like, I don't know that it could, I don't think it was written not being tongue in cheek. So, yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. Uh, sugar Sugar by the Archies. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. One Bad Apple Don't Spoil the Whole Bunch by the Osmonds. <laughs> I'm so glad you brought the Osmonds in. That's great. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Can you do that without being ironic, though? I don't, I don't know. I yeah, got... some of them are, these are the kind of more bubblegum ones. So right. I think, I think, I think they, they are ironic as they were written. So you, you get to take license with that. Yeah. Yeah. What about a little bit country and a little bit rock and roll? <laughs> right? There you go. Like, you know, like, why not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, go away, little girl. That was that was <laughs> yeah. that was Donny Osmond, right? Oh, it was. I think that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, anyway, <laughs> that's a fun little trip down down memory or whatever kind of lane it was. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Saturday night by the Bay City Rollers is is one of those ones that just people. It takes them. It takes them about forty five seconds for you to under, them to grok what you're doing, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the the, the way back machine memory starts kicking in. Right. And, that's it. Yeah. It's wow. like, wait, I this I know this. What is? Oh my god, that's what they're doing. Yep. Exactly. Yep. I like it. So all fun stuff. Just you know, if you want to throw in a little surprise into your set list, these are the ones that you know I would look to. You know, yeah. Sometimes. You know, you can go get a B side off of a Zeppelin, you know, sure release, and and uh, you'll get much of the crowd for sure. But you know, yep. good pop songs are good pop songs because they stay around forever. You know, they they they're well written songs with the hooks that that uh, make your heart sing. Well, I that's the, the key, right? Is <laughs> the, the hooks that make your heart sing? Yeah, that's it. I like it. I like it. It's good. My wife is, a, you know this, my wife is a big Manilow fan, right? I do know this. It is and one of the things we share about our, our respective wives. Yeah. There you go. And um, I just have always wanted to put in the right Manilow song to surprise her in a, in a show. And uh, it just never have gotten to the one that it was. Simon actually wanted to do a surprise her with a, a Manilow cover set one mm. time. Hmm. But the conversations about which songs to put in led down many a hairy road. So the, yeah. you know, they never seem to end up. I can see that you know, devolving. Copacabana would be quickly. the most obvious one, but yeah. Your band would actually do a great job with Copacabana, I think. I think so. Right. I mean, it, there's, it's there's sort of actually, yeah. there's a Manilow tribute band out here called Barely Manilow. I like it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good. <laughs> why not? I mean, sure. Why not? Sure. It lends <laughs> itself. I mean, it's right there. Take it. Go. Take it. <laughs> teed up. Te it's all teed up. Just take it. It's, all, it's right there. Just go take it. You're good to go. Somebody did. Clearly. It's good. Smart. 
Uh, I like it. All right. Well, that's all I got. We, we do have an email from Kevin that I want to talk about, but we'll do that next week. And we've actually got a couple of emails in the queue here. So keep sending them in though. Uh, we didn't get to your emails today. And I, I, I say this sincerely. I'm truly sorry about that. We, we, I have, we, I think I can speak for both of us, but certainly I have loved the increased level of interaction that we have had over the last couple of months with the show here, being able to do episodes that are based on your feedback that comes in is fantastic. It, it really opens up the whole world of possibilities. It, you know, Paul and I only see things certain ways and it's great when you bring in a new thing that we can sure. then dig into, you know, for you, with you, about you, whatever it is. I love it. So if you have a thought, please send it in feedback at giggabpodcast.com. We would, we will, an we answer everything that comes in. And if we don't send it again, it's only because it got lost somewhere. But, uh, but you know, and we, the ones that make sense to incorporate into the show, we absolutely love to do that. So thank you to everybody who's, who's sent stuff in and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll, We'll, we'll keep answering. It's what we do. The, the interaction is the key. It's the, you know, it's some of the only interaction any of us get. So <laughs> well, with the, with the outside world, right? Like it's just not, it's how it works. So these For days. Sure. Yeah. So thank you everybody. You got anything else to say or is it time to, uh, time to make it happen, man? I think we'll float away for this week, but uh, we'll do next week. And then we got uh, Thanksgiving and then we're down into the holidays and yeah. hopefully uh, got more news about another vaccine that may be a good idea yeah. and yeah i guess we'll be talking a lot about how things are or might be ramping towards open I'll, I'll ask you the question to close on today okay right here and right now yeah what percentage do you give to uh us having a, a full summer of music the next year 2021 um given that there have been three vaccines with preliminary news all the same news two of which are from companies whose names I knew of previously, uh, you know, respected in the field of pharmaceuticals. The third might also be, it just was a new name to me, but uh, I, I would, I would revise my feelings that we would, there's, there's probably a 30% chance that we have mm. a, an open summer. And the reason it's still relatively low is I think it seems like, you know, all I can believe is what people say. It seems like we've got a good path to have a lot of the country potentially vaccinated by, let's say, late spring. That's great. Let's assume for, you know, uh, allow me to dream. Let's assume that that has happened. At how, how long, how much longer after that will we all be comfortable packed into a sweaty bar with people, you know, elbow to elbow, butt to butt, whatever you want to call it. I don't think it's going to be the next day. I think we're going to need some proof that this actually, we are on the other side of this because there will yeah. still, you know, I mean, 90%. Awesome. Great. That, that means people still will be dying from this thing. And so there will still be a level of fear. Some of which is, is, you know, well-founded and some of which is simply residual. And I think it's going to take some time to heal from that. And I, that all makes sense. And, and I actually, I was a little bit more optimistic than you, yeah. you know, closer to 40%, but 30% okay. makes a lot of sense to me. And again, we're talking about here in the U S I, I yeah. had a quick chat with our friend, David Shannon, mm. you know, down in New Zealand the other day, he's, you know, they're, they're pretty much back, yeah. you know, they're, they're back. So good for you people around the world who are, you know, back and playing. And, you know, we'd love to hear from you about how long it took to actually get people coming back in to the venues to see you. If you're, if you're indoors, that'd be really interesting to know yeah. around the world, how, how, uh, yeah. how live music scenes are getting back up to normal. But I, I, I think you're probably right. I think, I think the vaccine and the, the, thinking about a vaccine and, and then the feeling comfortable that it worked and then feeling, and then on top of that feeling comfortable that you want to, you know, go out and be right next to somebody. I think that that's a process. It doesn't end process. the day after you take, yeah. yeah, it doesn't end the day after you take the vaccine. No, no, I don't think so. I mean, it will for <laughs> some people and, and I, you know, I don't judge, I, but th that will be the reality for some, but certainly not for all. And, yeah. and, and I, and, and it's possible we may never have all back on board, but we will, we will get to a point where we have most. And I, I think that's still some, if you want to go, if you want to talk about like normal, I think, I still think that's summer of 22. 
Because if we're, yes. you that know, if, if we fast forward a year and we've all had the vaccine or enough people have had a vaccine, it's, it's a, it's a it, the vaccine works. We people trust it. I mean, there's a lot of ifs here, but y- you know, the trust is a big one. Uh, you know, if we get to that point now, we're like, oh yeah, I can't wait till next summer when we can really go out and like do this, you know. It, it's possible there's a window towards the end of yeah. next summer, right? Yeah. You know, next August, September, it's possible if if we get enough people immunized in the spring yeah. and then we have two months of numbers showing that it's okay. Yeah, because there will be shows I, that happen, right? You know, if ten, let's say 10% of the public is comfortable going out and, and seeing a show and it, that's probably true right now. In fact, it might be a higher number right now. But but let's say it's ten percent, and the the uh, I don't authorities is the right word, but the or is the wrong word. But the 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 leaders of our communities, our local governments, our state governments, whatever it is, national government, however it all works out in the end, say that that's okay, right? Like they're going to say it's okay, and then from there it's going to be, do I feel like? Uh, like, am I okay with it? Right. So government says it's okay in whatever form that takes. You've got 10% of the people at least that are comfortable going out on day one after the government says it's okay. Well, those are, you know, the canaries going into the coal mine to borrow a phrase. And if the canaries come out of the coal mine, like you said, for a month or two with no real issues, well, that helps the rest of the populace join mm-hmm. in. And so I think you're probably right. I think, they, you know, if you want to hedge your bets for gigs that are going to happen, plan them for August and September and uh, you know, you might get there, you know? So, yep. There certainly is a push to do it. I mean, the amount oh, of time yeah. it's going by, you know, so well, anyway. I think, I think it's going to be like, you know, I, I still maintain that whenever that day is that we get most of, of the people comfortable again, it's going to be party central. We like people are going to want to be with each other. I certainly mm. want to be with people and I don't always like being with people, <laughs> uh, I, you know, but I like, I'm, I'm sort of done with, with, I mean, I'm not done. I, I, I'm still waiting. I'm not, you know, <laughs> not changing anything here, but, but I'm, I, 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 I have the benefits of being locked down in quarantine for someone that's, you know, a, um, an introvert, at least this particular introvert, I've, I've, I've filled up my well. I'm ready to go back out and see people whenever that can happen. So Boom. there you go. Yeah. All right, folks, that's what we got for this one. Thanks for hanging out with us again. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com. Always be performing. Always. That's what we do. It's who we are. 